Monday night, 6.46. I was a little late getting on the call. I was uh, rushing home from a, an appointment I prearranged with um, uh, with uh, um, a victim this week to be on the call at 6.30. I was a little late. Um, and, I, and I'm confessing that just to, just to guys that you know that... Uh, you know, we need to be flexible with one another, both accountability partners. Sometimes someone's held up in traffic or someone's held up at a meeting. But uh, Mark was very, um, very kind and uh, said, hey, no problem. Take your time. I'll be here and stuff. So um, so here we are at 6.47 now. Uh, that's on uh, uh, Central Time, 7.47 for you chaps over there in the northeast and indeed for Mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bring Mark on the line and we'll see how um, see how the calls went today. So... Senior consultant Mark Peterson, are you there, my friend? I am. Fantastic. Well, here we are on Monday. It's our first accountability call, and um, I kind of uh, gave you a little bit of preamble before we turned the recording on just to say, you know, love to hear about your day, good, bad, indifferent, and everything in between. We want to hear it how it is because that's how it is, you know, for everybody out there. So, so how, was your, how was your first day, my friend? Well, it was definitely busy. Um, I had forgotten that I had a doctor's appointment this morning, so I had to work late. Also, um, last night, actually before our call, my wife and I you know, went to the show and then we went to dinner and I got to know the waiter a little bit while we were eating dinner and ends up I scheduled a call with him at, uh, on our way out of the restaurant um, to take a look at the business. And I scheduled that for 6.30, so um, I had that going on as well. So, but the Greg, um, who I was going to talk to today, I had to talk to him before the end of business hours because he typically doesn't answer his phone in the evenings. So uh, I did, uh, actually, we talked a little bit earlier, texted back and forth, and I sent him a text message. I have an appointment set up with him for Friday at lunch. To talk to him about a business opportunity that uh, actually a business project I said that um, will help my wife uh, start her nonprofit which she's familiar with and uh, he was very happy to do that so I look forward to talking to him on Friday um, then I also and, go ahead okay, just want to yeah if you don't mind uh, what I want to do is kind of um, uh, interrupt you every now and again just so that we can kind of coach on various uh, aspects of that, um, especially you know, as, as some of that, uh, some of the invite was uh, uh, texting, um, right. and you know, I wanted to cover that for folks because I know a lot of people wonder, well, can we text? Can we not text? So, uh, first of all, um, the the level of success for us is uh, not necessarily if someone joins or not. Um, uh, as I said on the call last night, this the the whole purge call system is all about getting people in front of the, the plan. Um, and then whatever system you use, whether it's the Energy Gold Rush, whether it's uh, um, Code 24, and there's some other ones out there, they're all after this process. So um, a 100% success rate for us is when someone says, yes, I will see you. So first off, um, first call 100%, that's awesome. You get a nice gold star, well done. <laughs> you get a nice yeah. little treat after school, we very good. Um, but, but let me ask you, we, we, we talked about, you, you mentioned you, you, you texted him a little bit. Obviously, Greg's a good friend of yours. Um, and, and you did text me during the day to say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about how do you feel about text invites? Um, uh, my, my first response to that is, is I'm, I'm perfectly cool with text invites. Some people are very um, comfortable with text. And the thing that, you know, we have our five guidelines for, for, an, for uh, uh, an invite but there's always that one rule to, that trumps them all, uh, which is to be yourself. And it's, if it's yourself to text, then by all means, text the invite. That's perfectly good. And I was telling you today, Mark, that I invited a girl who I'd seen had, had lost her job on Facebook. And I, I dropped her a text and said, you know, she was a customer of mine anyway. And I said, I'm really sorry to hear about. And this is all text. Um, and I, I texted her to say, hey, you know, I'm really sorry to hear about your uh, – um, uh, your news, um, you know, perhaps it's a, a good opportunity for you to have, a, you know, to be on the other side of that electricity bill. You've been my customer for this little while and, you know, come take a look and see if it makes sense for you. So, again, there's still the takeaway in there because uh, I'm saying see if it makes sense for you. I, it might not make sense for you. Um, and arranged a time and we got together and she joined. 
So text invites work perfectly well. So based upon that, how was how did you text with Greg? How did that work out? Well, so we had another appointment. Um, we were going to get together Friday um, as well. And so I first sent him a text message saying that we were going to do that. And I wanted to uh, put a time on my schedule for that and checked his availability Friday morning. And okay. uh, he said, yep, yeah, that would be great. I'll be around. And then I uh, sent him another message. Uh, I can actually read it to you if you want. Sure. That way I can get a little coaching as well, potentially. Um, I said, great. I would also like to brief you on a non-simulation business project I'm working on to help Lori get her nonprofit started. Would meeting for breakfast or coffee Friday morning before work or lunch Friday work better for you? And uh, he said, let's do lunch on Friday. There's a ton going on here, and I should be in early on Friday. So, um, and I, yeah. So that's it. So we're going to meet for lunch on Friday, and I'll be there ahead of time, Wonderful. working with him on some other things. So yeah, Wonderful. And and you did ask me the question when you when you talk about text. You're saying, well, look, if I put all of the the five points in the text, it gets really long, and uh, and and that's when when I said to you, well, if it's you know you've got to be yourself more than anything else, and if it's your text to say, hey, let's get together, um, as you did, and and just to qualify one thing, you said a non-simulation product. Uh, or non-simulation right. business, that's that's because you're in flight simulations. That's not uh, ambit relevant. So for those of you that's who correct. are listening who are wondering, what's he talking about, a non-simulation yeah. business? You know, it's kind of like, what's he talking about? That's because that's what um, uh, that's what Mark does uh, in his proper job. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, that, that's great. You know, you you were very much yourself. You, you uh, qualified that you wanted to show him another – Business that was going to bring uh, that was going to help your wife with her nonprofits because it's going to bring her home and give her time, and that way you're getting together socially still, but you're also not um, kind of uh, uh, ambushing him uh, with a surprise. You know, you you did that very well, very respectful of his time, respectful of yours. Couldn't have put it better myself. I think that's really good. So thumbs up uh, on that, and also um, for those of you who are listening who are wondering about text and text invites. Um, I'm a big fan of them if they're relevant. I, I prefer face-to-face because -face I think this is a face-to-face uh, -face business. But if texting, the way texting is going, um, I think it's really good. Plus, it's sometimes, you know, I, you know as well as I do, Mark, that sometimes a text is the only way to get hold of someone. Um, right. You know, some, sometimes someone like myself, I'm always on the on the call uh, on the phone to someone in my team or someone cross line from me, and it's very hard to get hold of me sometimes. So a text for me sometimes is 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 really good, a great way to invite. And I've invited many times using the text, um, so uh, no problem. Maybe what we'll do is one time maybe we'll have a a team call on on um, scripts and ideas for text invites. But uh, yeah, I'm a big fan yeah. of texting, so uh, good good for you. That's great. Okay, so that's Yeah, and great. it works and well uh, because normally when he and I get together, we coordinate with text and then meet in person. Um, sometimes right. we talk on the phone, but like even my kids, um, they love me a lot and I love them, but uh, it's rare that they would answer a call from me. They'll answer a text <laughs> and, even though they ignore my calls. So yeah, it, isn't you know. that funny? But uh, So I think that's also, it's a generational thing as well. So sometimes if you are looking to invite someone younger or you are someone younger, then I think a text is perfectly uh, perfectly okay and perfectly normal. So, um, yeah, good for you. And, and the, the, the other thing that we covered on the, on the phone today, because you were asking me about this, was, well, you know, the, you know, how to be in a hurry and talking about your why and the hook and all of those types of things. Because they're not in the text invite, what you can do is you can now save them and use them in the preamble before the presentation. So you've got the invite, you've got the ability to spend some time with Greg showing the business. And then prior to hitting the, the video that he's gonna look at, you can say, well, you know, just Greg, just so you know um, a little bit about, you know, this business and a little bit why I'm doing it, because obviously you know me as a flight simulator guy, is, um, you know, I, for number one, I wanna bring my wife home. You know, we're in our 50s and start explaining your why. You know, start, so he's still, you still get the opportunity to use those elements of the invite that you may have done face to face, to face or on the phone, but you couldn't do in a text. We just take them out and put them in at the before 
the actual presentation. Um, you can still, so you still talk about your why. You can say, and I know you, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, you're looking at some point to bring your wife home or whatever his why was. Um, you're yeah. real excited about this. You've been doing this for a couple of years now. You've made some great money with it. In fact, you know, I make as much money with this on a residual basis as I do with what, what my wife makes uh, in her proper job. I mean, that's a really good hook. Uh, and Greg, yeah. before before we start the video, uh, you know, I want you to know that this may or may not be your cup of tea, and that's fine. But as a friend, you know, if I'm making, if I'm having success with something, I really should share it with my friends. Um, and so, you know, I want you to see how simple it is. So, you know, here's a situation where there's just four short videos, and you know, and see if it makes sense for you or not. So, all of those elements of the invite, if they're not in the invite because you're doing a text, save them for the preamble before the actual presentation. Does that make sense for you as well, Mark? It does. I thought it was a brilliant solution to, rather than doing a long text message, to uh, use as a, a preamble. It was very good. So yeah. thanks for that yeah. advice. And, 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 yeah, no, no, no problem. It made complete sense to me too. And uh, I'd love to say it was because it was all planned and everything, but no, it just made sense off the cuff when we, when you and I were talking. Um, yeah. So, um, and, uh, but I think that's something we should bring into the training. Uh, I think that's yeah. a, a really good idea. And, so, and that's the thing, actually, for me, you know, very often people, you know, I'm the accountability partner, so I'm the guy who's supposed to be giving the advice. But, you know, I, I'm telling you with, you know, with, with Dana and with Christy and with Beth and with Javier and all of those previous um, alumni, every time we have a week together, we learn something new. And this purge call gets a little bit more refined and a little bit more refined and some great new ideas that I wouldn't have thought of. So this isn't, you know, all, this isn't all the Richard Laidler show. It's, uh, you know, we're stealing from all of the alumni, all of these great ideas. So um, that's what's so great about it. And that's why I love it being so live and so, you know, real. It's, it's, it's awesome. Okay. Yeah, well, very uh, good. So that's, that, that's Greg. Uh, so good job on that one. Um, were you able to get a second invite in today? I uh, called uh, Tom. But he didn't answer, so I left a message. So, and it was a non-specific message. Just uh, left my name. He was somebody I met on an airplane, and I uh, just recalled a little bit of our conversation on the plane, and uh, said I, at the time, I was actually mid-change on employers, and said I have some new contact information and would like to talk to him about some of the things we talked about on the plane, and asked him to give me a call back. So, great. Good stuff. And uh, are you familiar with the uh, four-call uh, methodology that we've talked about on the calls before? Yes, I've heard that before, right? So, right. Four, so four strikes so basically, and then put them on the purge. That's right. So we so we basically have uh, four calls. Um, you know, we, we attempt to get hold of someone in four calls. First one is just, uh, you know, uh, hey, Tom, this is Mark. We met on the airplane blah, 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 as you did, um, got something I need to talk about, give me a call back. Um, the second call, you can do the same day because you can just assume he didn't get the first message and say, uh, hey, Tom, this is Mark again. I left you a message earlier on, blah, blah, blah. Um, then the third call, we do the next day. So we give an overnight and say, hey, Tom, this is Mark again. I left you a couple of messages yesterday. I haven't heard back from you. A uh, little concerned um, that everything's okay. Uh, can you give me a call when you get a chance? So we, we have the little concern thing in there to add a little bit of guilt um, to have <laughs> them, you know, hopefully give you a call back. Then we give it another full 24 hours um, for the final call, which is the fourth call, um, which is, uh, uh, hey, Tom, this is Mark again. I've left you a few messages and I'm not heard back. I'm assuming you're out of town or, or something's going on. You're not getting your messages or whatever. Uh, I don't want to be a nuisance, so this is the last time I'm going to call you, but there is something I need to talk to you about. Um, give me a call as soon as you get this message. And so this is the last call. This is, you know, so that's the fourth call. Um, okay. And there's a couple of reasons why we do that. Um, now, now, even though it's the last call, it doesn't mean to say Tom's gone forever. What we do, what we want to make sure we do is we want to constantly be making sure new names are coming into our week. We don't want names to hang around for a long time. Hence why it's called the purge call. We want to be able to purge people and have a constant supply of new names coming through. Uh, because if Tom's hard to reach and he's avoiding calls and this type of thing, and we constantly are trying to call him, he may be getting in the way of a, another call to a person who's praying for an opportunity like this. So with Tom, we'll give him four calls 
Um, uh, and then at the, um, at the end of the fourth call, hopefully he'll call us back, but we're going to put him on a drip list. Uh, we're going to purge him, put him on a drip list for two months. Um, if, uh, and so in, and in two months, we'll just go get back to re-inviting him again. And that way, then, he's cleared off our list, so we have a clean plate uh, each week. Does that make sense, Mark? Yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's, it, uh, the, the other benefit of that is it also, we talk about keeping the power. This, this uh, business has a lot of ability to steal your power and to steal your self-confidence. And there's a certain element of, um, uh, of, of rebuilding your own power and your own posture by purging someone, saying it's almost like a screw this guy. He's not calling me back. He's gone. You know, it's not that, but it's kind of that, you know, that to, to kind of get that um, posture back for yourself. Whereas if you're constantly calling and they're never responding, the power is being stolen from you little by little by little by little by little. And so yeah. we want to make sure that we avoid that. And it's a, it's a little thing, but it's actually a big thing. Um, and so it's uh, we have the four call process. And if they don't make, we don't get through to them in the first four calls, we just purge them for a couple of months and give them a call back then. But you're only at the first call. Hopefully, within the first uh, four calls, um, Tom, you'll get an opportunity to invite Tom. Yes, I look forward to it. Cool. Uh, any other calls you're able to make today? Well, uh, you know, again, only the other business presentation I did today from the guy that I met um, before our call yesterday. So um, I, 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 he took a look at my website, uh, liked the opportunity. Is uh, He's working two jobs right now, and one of them is working 12 hours a day. And he wants to he said he would like to get started on this when he has a little more time, and I have his permission to call him back in a month or two. So okay. and he also let, let, asked my permission to keep my contact information and to call me back if things change. So, oh wow, sounds like a good guy. Um, yeah. Let, let, do you mind if I? I mean, this is this wasn't part of our list. Do you mind if I ask a couple of questions about it? Sure, absolutely. How did you invite him? Okay, so he was the waiter at the restaurant that we were eating at after the show last night. Um, I. I'm kind of a talkative person. I like to find out about people. So I just got to know a little bit about him and what his life situation was. Um, mm -hmm. It sounded like he is very ambitious. Uh, he's working uh, as a waiter um, because he, he's interested in making more money and he seemed mm -hmm. very personable. So, uh, you know, I, I spend most of the time getting to know them and with the goal of really trying to find out what their why is. Um, mm -hmm. And then on our way out, I'll I will often do this. I'll ask, okay, so do you keep your options open for making a little extra income part time? And I did that with him last night. He said, well, yes. And uh, I said, well, I'd like to introduce you to uh, a business that my wife and I are doing right now. Um, do you have some time where you have maybe 15 minutes that you could uh, I could walk you through some information on the internet? And he said, sure. Uh, I you know, he basically gave me the times that he is not working right now, which is only a few days a week in the evenings. And uh, so I scheduled a specific time with him to call him tonight at 630. And unlike most of the times when this happens, he actually answered the call. And <laughs> and even more so, um, oftentimes, even if they do answer my call and say they'll take a look at the business presentation, I'll call and they won't answer. But he answered. He looked at all the videos. He uh, indicated that uh, through some of the information he said that he liked about it, that uh, um, that he actually did watch them. And so that was uh, very good. So it's, it's kind of a cold contact kind of a way of doing things, but I like to make it a little warmer by getting to know people ahead of time. Yeah, but, I completely agree. Uh, in, in the coaching that we do down here, Mark, we have um, three types of invitations. Uh, the first one is a proactive invitation, and that's the, the invites we do from the written list. So the, the ones that we're talking about, they're proactive invites. That's like, I want to call you know, this guy, here's the invite I'm going to do, okay, and pick up the phone and call. That's a proactive. We also have a reactive invite, which is an offer of help. So if, if you and I were chatting, Mark, and you, know, you were telling me about you know, your business and this type of thing, and you know, you're, you really, your wife really wants to get herself home, um, to be able to spend some more time with her uh, not-for-profit deals, um, then I would be listening for pain. Um, and then a reactive invite is an offer of help more than an invite. 
Um, so I right. would wait until our our encounter had got to it to its close, where you're going to go your way, I'm going to go mine. I'd say, hey, Mark, um, uh, you know, I don't know why I didn't think about this earlier on, but um, I may have something that will help bring your wife home. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be your cup of tea, but do me a favor. Give me your email address. I want to get you some information, and you will then give me your email address. Most people are very comfortable with giving their email address. Um, and then uh, I don't know what the telephone codes are up where you are, um, but then what I'll say is, and are you a 214 or an 817 number? Um, so, mm-hmm. And that's a little technique that while I'm writing your email address down, I will not look up. I will keep looking down, and I'll say, are you a 214 or an 817 number? And um, 100% of the time, I get the number. It's just a little posture. It's just a good way of doing that. And then, um, and I'll say, and, and, you, and what's, what's a good time to get hold of you so I can make sure I get you the information um, so you can get it through to your wife? And you'll say, well, I'll get home at this sort of time, and then I'll give you a call. So it's very similar to what you're doing. Um, that's a reactive invite, though, an offer of help, hearing pain. But then the one that you did last night with the, with the waiter, we call that a direct invite, um, <laughs> which is where you receive good service. So whether it's a waiter or a bank teller or a car salesman or a tour guide or whatever it is, and it's exactly like you did it. You, you know, you listen, um, uh, and they tell you all about their, you know, wants and desires. And you, st- you soon get to know, um, you know, what plans and desires they have. It's amazing how much people will share with a complete stranger. And if I'm impressed with that person, I'll do exactly like you said. Um, I, I, I have it slightly longer. Um, and that I'll and I'll say, look, you know, I, I've got to get out of here right now. So now's not a really good time. But um, you know, I, I have to say, you know, thank you so much for the the service you gave us. You know, you took really good care of us. Thanks for taking care of my wife. You made me look really good. I'm going to be very popular when I get home. Thanks for doing that. Um, but but I, need, I need to share something with you real quick. I'm actually spearheading the um, expansion of a company up here in the Northeast, um, which is having huge success. Um, and we are looking for, you know, sharp individuals very much like yourselves um, who uh, in, who are looking for other ways to make extra money. And I was very impressed with the way you took care of me, and this could be something that would be really good for you. And then I would say, do you keep your options open for extra income alongside what you're currently doing? I'll add the alongside what you're currently doing so people don't think I'm going to be quitting my job necessarily. Um, so there's so that so that uh, I completely agree. I think you did a fantastic job with the waiter, the way you invited him. Um, that's one of three invites that we do, um, and you did it perfectly. Um, I do have one question for you though. Um, sure. When you did the presentation, uh, he had a look and he mentioned mm-hmm. that he had some concerns about time. Um, did you get him on a three-way call? I did not get him on a three-way call at that point. Uh, I actually had somebody ready to go, and uh, one of my uh, one of the things I need to work on is I tend to let people off kind of easily, and uh, and and I just said I understand and uh, and coordinated about getting back with him, but I didn't get him on a three-way call. So. Okay, and I understand that, you know, because you're a nice guy, uh, and it does take a certain amount of posture, a certain amount of self-confidence. Not that you don't have that, you do, but, you know, sometimes it is easy to let someone go. And I, I have also been um, guilty of that as well. But uh, I'm, I'm pre- I, I've got it down now where when someone says whatever objection there is, or I don't like to call them objections, I like to call them concerns, because uh, that's a little less negative, or, or you know, or, or, or whatever it is, um, then I will I will go for, to segue in my guy because the, the point is he's got two jobs and he's busy. But you know as well as I do that makes no difference to how successful you can be in an ambit business because in the business sure. he's in, I mean I've got two restaurants down here that I run, um, and I get to bump into people who've got pain all the time. And it it takes 30 seconds while I'm talking to a couple, and you know I hear that one of them's just lost their job. It takes 30 seconds for me to take my restaurant hat off, put my ambit hat on, and say, "Hey, listen, I know, now's not the time. Obviously, you're eating. You've got to get back to work. But I might have something that'll help you out whilst um, you're uh, looking, whilst you're between jobs. What, what's your email address? And are you an 817 or a 214 number? Okay, I'll get you some information. Take a look at it and tell me what you think." And then I take my ambit hat off and put my uh, restaurant hat back on. It took me a minute. This guy, as a waiter, I don't care how busy he is. If he's that type of guy, he also sounded extremely eloquent and extremely 
just a good guy, he would kill yeah. this no matter how busy he is. So what I would have done to, to get the three-way call, um, uh, this is a technique that I, I use, uh, which works perfectly. So I'd have been on to him. I'd say, does that make sense? And he'd say, well, yeah, I really like the business, but I'm working two jobs right now. I'm super busy. Now's not a really good time. And I'd say, you know what? I completely agree. Hold on a second. I've got an idea. And then I will call you. If you're my three-way guy, I'll call you in on the on there, and I'll and I'll pull you in. And I'll say, um, what was the waiter's name, Mark? Jose. Jose. I'd say, Jose. Yep. Jose. Uh, I've been really lucky. Excuse me one sec. I've been really lucky. I've managed to get Mark on the phone. Mark's a really good friend of mine. He's been in this business for seven years, and he is the busiest person on the planet. Um, and he still has time for his ambit business. And I know you have your concerns, and it may not be for you because of your timing, but uh, I just wanted Mark to let you know how he overcomes those time issues. Hold on. Mark, this is Jose. I met him at a restaurant last night, blah, 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 blah. Make the introduction, and I'm done. Yep. So I'm not asking for oh, that's permission. that's great. Yeah, and, and I'm excited. I'm like, I've just, oh, I've got an idea. Now, you've got to be quick with the three-way call. You've got to make sure that I get you on the call real quick. I've got to make sure you're going to answer quick because I want to get you on to Jose as, real, as quickly as possible. I don't ask, well, Jose, I've got a friend of mine who was also very busy. Let me get him on the line and answer your questions for you. He's going to say no. Yeah. You know, he's going to think you're trying to close him. Whereas if I say, you know, Jose, hold on a second. I've got an idea. He's like, okay, <laughs> you know, and, and, I, and, I, <laughs> and then I just assume. I'm, I'm helping him out. He said he's real busy. I've got a guy on the phone who's real busy. Uh, he said he liked the business. So yeah. uh, it's a wonderful way to segue into three-way call, and I think that would have solved that issue with uh, Jose. Yeah, yeah. So I could use that same technique on the follow-up call if he says he's still really busy. Um, yeah. And I was thinking about doing that maybe sometime around uh, or near after simulcast. Um, yeah, just absolutely. giving me a call again and checking on his situation. So. Perfect. And it takes a little bit of practice to nail it. Yep. Um, you know, but but you posture that you've just had an idea. Um, yeah. You know, uh, and it works wonderfully. You know, I, I, yeah, I've heard be, that I've before, got an idea. I can see that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll either do I've got an idea or I've got, I'll say, oh, you know what, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. And again, I, I, I'm not saying it's my training in any way. I've heard it myself as well, different variations of it, but it works a treat. So um, yeah, we we'll wow. get around that. So cool. Yeah, All probably. right. So okay. a good day, a good first day. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. All right. So uh, are you all set up and um, uh, ready to go for tomorrow or do we need to work? We actually probably need to work on a couple of invites, don't we? How are we doing on time? Well, so uh, my plan was to do a couple of people that we already talked about. Um, okay. The dentist. I have an appointment okay. with him tomorrow, so I'll invite him there. And then okay. uh, Charles Bartell, or Charles, <laughs> who um, is a retired salesman, and we'll use the... Uh, Nonprofit approach with him, so I sure. think. Well, here, what about this as an idea then? Uh, between now and tomorrow night, why don't you pick another two names if you have a little bit of time, maybe over lunchtime, and sure. create invites based around the five um, guidelines that we have, so that tomorrow yeah. night we can discuss the invites that you came up with. How does that sound? Very good. Look I don't mean to patronize you. I know you're a very, you know, you're really good at this, but I think it'd be really good for those people who are listening in on the call who are new. I think that would be sure. a real good exercise for us. No, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, despite the fact that uh, I've been doing this for seven years with my wife and we've seen quite a bit of success, I would say a large part of our success is because the first person that we invited to take a look at the business has killed it. And uh, most of our <laughs> success has been from her. Um, mm -hmm. This is Lori Bricks. I don't know if you know her. She was one of the um, Pure Energy Award winners at Ambition this last year. so I know Laurie very well. I love Laurie. She's been a guest on our team call as well. Um, yeah. And she's a big fan of the Purge call as well. Yeah, she's she's really, really great. But, um, yeah, um, and, uh, yeah, you were lucky to find a rock star there for sure. Um, but, Absolutely, um, yeah. Yeah, but she was a good friend of ours to begin with, and, and we both have kind of just been learning the business as we go, but um, she's done a brilliant job at it, and we've been very fortunate. So, But, you know, I want to promote to EC, and so we mm -hmm. need to buckle down and uh, hone our skills. 
and add some yeah. more structure to our business. So. Well, I, I, on on the call on the previous on the last call I did with Paul, um, uh, Paul Mitchell, senior consultant, we I worked out the numbers. Uh, uh, based on the averages that we've had uh, that we've had on our um, previous um, purge weeks, and we and we a- it averaged on the low end that um, people would get four opportunities to show the plan um, based upon the purge call, ten names, two calls a day. They got four opportunities to show the plan on the low end, and mm-hmm. on average, if you're if you're a little bit below average, you'll get one out of ten showing the plans that someone will join your business. And based upon that, if you do the purge week every week and you do it with those new people who join your business, you can get from MC to EC, as long as you do this every week and you don't quit, in 15 to 18 months. Um, and so for you as a strong SC, um, there's a new, if you plug into a purge call and you make sure that your new folks plug into the purge call with the same odds, the same numbers as we've worked out on 16 weeks of purge calls of varying capabilities of people, uh, you could pretty much formularize when you're going to get to EC. Um, so yeah. I'm actually planning on putting a little uh, training together on one of our team calls where I actually kind of show those numbers in real detail. Um, but, uh, yeah, we can – if you're doing this – and you, I know you understand this, that if you're doing 10 names on Sunday, two calls a day and an accountability call, you know that it's just a matter of time when you reach EC, not a matter of skill. Right. Yep. So, uh, so all right, my that's friend. Well, uh, definitely my intention. Uh, so. Okay. Cool. I love it. Well, thank you very much. A great first day. Um, we got uh, – um, uh, uh, an opportunity to show Greg the plan on Friday. I'm excited to hear how that goes. But uh, um, now tomorrow night uh, may be a little difficult again for us to get together at 6:30 because there's a, I'm, I'm filming um, a, an event, um, an Ambit event uh, at around that sort of time. So we may need to be a little bit later or a little bit earlier. Um, but I'll chat yeah. with you tomorrow about that if that's okay. Yeah, my wife and I help with. Uh meeting um in the area on tuesday night so later would probably work out better for me so. okay cool and later maybe as late as like 9 30 10 is that okay that perfect yeah all right good deal all right my friend so uh great thanks for getting on the call and i'll see you tomorrow yeah thank you hey anytime thanks bye. man bye-bye now yeah bye